I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. Welcome to Accidentally Casual, a podcast that stands unshaken. Uh, we do not have Scott from Bioware Babylon today. He is out on another adventure, but I still got Seeker here. Hello. And we, well, I mean, I've been playing a lot of Red Dead 2 again lately. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, Seeker, but I want to talk more about it or something it's it's a very very good game oh my and god there's lo- so it, when when you can spend hundreds of hours in something and still stumble onto new things that you didn't see in the previous hundreds of hours that you, you spent in a place it's like yeah this seems definitely worth talking about um i don't think we mentioned last time we talked about red Dead redemption 2 the uh, the lady who does the is it wants you to find the dinosaur bones what about her She's great. I just, I, I love that she's so confident, especially the way she's like, uh, oh yeah, there, there's big lizards everywhere. And Arthur looks around as if like one's about to come, like there's a dinosaur about to come cresting over the damn hill. Yeah, I mean, um, if you think about it, like if you're explaining dinosaurs to someone who, like dinosaurs have dinosaurs, never yeah. been around before. Have you ever finished that quest? Not yet. Okay, it's kind of hilarious because you know you basically find different bones from very varied parts of the map. Yeah. And send them her way. Well, basically, she puts them all together in some sort of giant monstrosity of a creature. Oh, so it doesn't even look a... properly? So. No, no, no. So it's the most fucked up looking thing you've ever seen in her life. And uh, she ends up giving you... Oh, I forget what she gives you for it, but um, like a big reward for it. But it's just, just you get to witness this absolute monstrosity of this thing. And she's like, oh, look, it had um, pointy incisors, it had flippers, it had everything. So it's, it's like a bunch like, of um, dinosaurs that she put into one? Yes. I mean, her spirit's there. Just but that, the that's because that's what they used to do. Um Funny, funny enough, in uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, they kind of reference this, where um, you, when you get the uh, fossils to recreate into a Pokemon, you have to put two together because the British museums at the time were fucking shit and would just put whatever bones they found together regardless of it, if it made any sense or not, and they just try and create a new creature, because science, I guess. I mean, isn't, wasn't there something of, like, the Bronchiosaurus isn't an actual dinosaur or something? I think it's that thing of, they don't, if I remember right, they, they don't know how it could possibly have walked, because it would have been too heavy for its own body to support itself. I think that's the thing about the Brachiosaurus. Or is I it, could be wrong. I know they could have like figured that out by now. And Brontosaurus, uh, for God's sake, the Brontosaurus never even existed on NPR. Oh, okay. Brontosaurus. Okay. Well, there's, yeah, okay. there's Brontosaurus and Brachiosaurus, which were both long neck dinosaurs. Okay. Yeah, and there's also a Patasaurus in there, so, yeah. And then there are the uh, the water ones of like Plesiosaurus. Yeah, those things are wild. Mm-hmm. Like how? Like <clears throat> I'm just wondering how nature was like. So we got these flippers. We got this body, and it's swimming all around. Like instead of putting the head close to the body, let's make like a 15 foot neck. Like giraffes. Well, it was giraffes have yeah, their it... neck because for like trees or something like some sort of thing of that yeah, for leaves yeah but it's on, not on like the tops of trees i mean the fish aren't you know well if you're a, a predator and you're filled with in an ocean because there was such a oxygen 
if I remember right, there was such an oxygen rich environment that basically everything just got bigger among other factors. Yeah, well, so I mean, bugs, bugs were, were huge, the size of fish buses were huge. or cars yeah. or something. I don't know. So they were just big. You had megalodons going around. So, yeah, it's just like among other beasties and Christ knows what. Well, I mean, so the just, logic. Yeah, the ocean was a very scary place at that point. Did the ocean still scary? But, I mean, like, an, uh, oh, yeah. a d- another reason that a plesiosaurus or something could have a neck like that is maneuverability. It's easier mm-hmm. to snatch something moving around like that if they had a neck. Although I don't know how maneuverable they're... I don't know, like, know how many muscles or whatever that... Have you ever is. seen a seal sort of retract its own... its neck into its own blubber? It's so cute. Of what like, I, I'm, I'm a happy seal, and oh, I'm, just, seal? I'm just chilling in my own blubber. It's just it, like, oh, you're so Isn't cute. that one of the, like, not original memes, but one of the starter ones of the awkward seal? Probably. Um, you got another awkward seal meme thing. I think I have. I'm sure what? I have, but yeah. It, it's absolutely, it's a awesome. seal that's, like, folding into its neck. And, uh, but my parents, when I was a wee lad, they tricked me one time. Mm-hmm. I loved dinosaurs. Like, I wanted uh-huh. to be a paleontologist and all that kind of stuff when I was a kid. And my parents went on a walk one time, and they came back with this weird-looking rock that I still have. It is an mm-hmm. oddly smooth, circular, or, like, oval, big rock about the size of my palm. Um, mm-hmm. And my dad told me it was a fro- uh, fossilized dinosaur egg. And I straight mm-hmm. up believed that for a good year. Well, that's kind of what you do, isn't it? With, like, when you're, like, how old were you at the time? I don't know, like 21. Okay, you probably <laughs> should learn by no, no, no. then. I was like 13, 12, or even younger. I was like, it, it was when I lived up in Connecticut, so I was definitely a, a little kid there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, there's... The, and then, like, on the flip side, I tricked my nephews when they were around that age to go to Home Depot for striped paint. I got uh, one of my co-workers, though, to go to one of the uh, kitchen stores that's in the market looking for a left-handed spatula. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm sure that thing fucking exists it does somewhere. Not, well, maybe, but spatulas are... Th- you there, know, they're no not, they spatula. don't need to be left handed, but I'm sure someone's made a left handed spatula. She thought that there was one. Other things that exist are those cigarette cards, and I found all of those. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Like, you didn't find the dinosaur bones, but you hunted down all the cigarette cards? Yeah, because I found out that if you just buy the premium packs, you get cards mm-hmm. that way. So, when you finish the game and you have like $10 million, I just bought a bunch of card packs and then would discard Smoke them and then through. bought more and then discard and bought more and discard until I essentially I got all of them and okay. then sold I them mean, all. Fair, I'm oh. not, yeah. I mean, it's only video game smoking. It's not like it's going to kill you. Oh, well, I mean, I didn't even have Arthur or, well, at this point it was John. I was going to say, um, it's not going to kill John at least. Yeah, um, but... I just discarded them. Like, I didn't have him even smoke it. I just held the Y button to just discard. Just get rid of them. Ah, so that you can still do that and that still keeps the card. Okay, yeah. that's fine. It, it I didn't realize them. that because uh, I was going around smoking them. Oh, uh, yeah, no, just no. Just to try and burn I, them. I at first thought so, too, and then I realized, like, once you get the pack, then you the card, you get the card then. I've got to say, I, I do, for sheer like cliche but absolutely playing it to the hill i do like the um like is a strong term but um uh, i am entertained by the uh ens- incestuous um hillbilly cannibals that um that are like oh hey come in um you know and <laughs> Because Arthur's face when he figures out their brother and sister is just hilarious. I mean, Arthur goes through a lot of weird stuff. Oh, yeah. There's there's one particular instance where it's like, um, did Arthur just get 
you know, not to just trigger warning for, you know, horrible things here, but, like, did Arthur just get sexually assaulted? I think he did. Well, and, I, I'm um, surprised that they didn't kill him. Or, no, wait, they, they thought that they killed him. They thought they had. But they're but, yeah. cannibals. The so protagonist why they armor syndrome. Him? Because, I mean, to be fair, like, that's fresh meat right there. And Arthur, I mean, they don't know he's sick. Arthur is... A prime looking dude. Yeah. Like you'd think that that would be top shelf meat. So <laughs> why would you? That's just some kinda... prime cowboy right yeah, there. Yeah. So why would you just like toss that out? To be fair, they might not have been cannibals. I might have been projecting. Oh, the they fact absolutely. That they were had you know, they were just like you might as well take off every fucking cliche. You know, you might as well be cannibals. They had to be. Um, yeah. And I mean, there's um, there's another random group that a random person that I came across. Uh, although the cannibals, they have their house. Walter, the guy that you just meet around the area that is this calm dude that's like, hey, if you ever see any Lights of these blocks. ginger snaps around here, you can get two of them for me. I, I really like, uh, they, they give me that yeah. good kick of energy and you bring them. He's just a solid yeah. dude. I'll make something and for you. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. I would, I like, it, the last time, I didn't know it was the last time of meeting him. And he's like, I think this is everything I need. I, I got everything for my journeys. I'm heading out. I, I fear that our paths may not cross again. And wish you the luck, friend. I'm like, oh, I don't want to. How dare this, this, this incidental side character make me feel things. Yeah, I was like, no, you stay. You're not allowed to leave now. Yeah, no, no, you stay. Um, there's lots of... Do you know that you can go to the graves of every single one of their gang members? And if you sort of stand, stand around long enough, you'll sort of hear bits of dialogue. I didn't from... know about the dialogue, but I knew about yeah. the... There's nine graves that you can go to yeah. because uh, that's part of the checklist of 100%ing yeah, yeah. the game. <laughs> uh, it's... It, it's pretty rough in terms of um, my my special boy Sean getting shot in the fucking face. Just Man, like, that's nowhere. And there is actually a little bit of foreshadowing with that. Um, mm -hmm. Sean and I think it's Bill or what, and uh, I can't remember his name specifically, but he he goes on the other side. He doesn't join on your side. He he turns with Dutch. Yeah, um, Bill Williamson, I think. Yeah. yeah, he he and Sean are having a little bout with each other, and Sean says something about getting shot or something when Bill is in charge, yeah. or something like that. Or Bill says like he won't have anyone be shot on any of his plans, and Sean makes a joke about mm. it, and then that mission is Bill leading that group, and Sean gets shot with it. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of foreshadowing with that that I, I saw in a YouTube video later that like pointed it out and I just went, oh, oh damn. Yeah, this because that was what made made me go on another Red Dead Redemption two binge was um, watching a YouTube video of oh all the like weird little details that they put in like not weird by the you know, you would just never think to put them in unless you were like hyper focused on every single aspect of this thing yeah the like, detail in oh, that game is um, remarkable air strauss you can see he's got little focals in his glasses like who's looking at his fucking glasses with that much scrutiny but it's like yeah no he has them yeah, the, i mean just the minute detail when you Teensy walk or drag detail. something through the mud it reacts in like to what is happening and if it's someone's clothes like if you get knocked into the mud your character stands up muddy and it's not mm. like a, oh, they just slapped a mud texture on there. It looks like, no, that's what it would look like if I fell that way in the pile of mud. And the last time I, I did it, I, um, I was avoiding hitting up the Downs farm for as long as possible. Until I heard Jasper, like, go on, go to the Downs farm. It's like, but I don't want you. I don't want to get infected with TV. <laughs> Yeah, it, that you know, is, it's, it's a it, requirement. Like, peop, there's oh, a no. lot of people that try to circumvent that, or they'll try to wear a bandana or, like, a mask during that so yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't spread. Because, you know, that'd be cool. But um, it's, it's, a sh it's a shame that masks don't work in Red Dead Redemption 2, well, but they, they do work in real life. So well, in, in the cutscene, 
Arthur doesn't wear the mask. If you yeah. have, if you have a mask, Arthur doesn't have it in the cutscene. Because you know, sorry, you got to get infected here. Because otherwise, the whole story doesn't really make sense. But yeah. um, I mean, that'd be that'd be a really interesting thing if they had, if there was a way that you could not get TB, mm -hmm. but still have it kind of go towards that ending. Mm. Because I don't think it would take, like, like I said, I, I'm only, uh, I said last time, I'm only familiar with High Honor Arthur, and he's pretty much there. He's pretty much there. He's still a bad dude who does bad things, but that's mostly because he's loyal to Dutch. He's like, I, I, he doesn't want to go out of his way to hurt anyone. Um, like, will do if push comes to shove, but... Oh, uh, you know, as a rule, doesn't want to needlessly murder everyone in sight. Yeah, um, on the flip side, I just... I mean, I still had my Arthur. I finished the game with high honor and everything, mm -hmm. but there would just be times where I'd be walking around the city or something like that, and someone would just, like, say something rude about me. I'd just turn and shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> I just never did that, I don't think... But uh, the funniest, I, I was just in stitches. I don't know, I, I was so amused by this. You, you know when you pass people, you go, howdy? Yeah, you can or greet something them to or something. Well, there was a dude who didn't say howdy back. So I turned the horse around and started following him, going, howdy, howdy. <laughs> and then he was like, please stop following me. <laughs> and started running away. And I kept following him. Him, just saying howdy and I was just laughing my ass off I think I just in the end I just lassoed him off and dragged him around a bit just to teach him some manners the uh, musicians <laughs> around the area if you whistle by them it starts bothering them yes which just like I mean and also like all the doggies in the areas if you pet them they'll remember you and come up for more pets the and he's like good doggies and but the thing that's just so damn remarkable about Rockstar is that, like, no one, like, just designers would have to be sitting in a room and go, okay, we have to design this aspect of... Um, Make the horse bollocks shrink in when it's cold. Yeah, and the, sure. that, that's not just, like, a little on switch that they can do. They're, I mean... It, it's not like a month-long project either, but it, it, that requires artists and animators to have something of a different model. Either way, of it so being many, shrunk. many people had to spend a lot of time. Would have to do it. Yeah, it's, I mean, sound design, they may have to make that like. I don't know what uh. sound it makes. I, I can guarantee you it doesn't make that sound. I mean, I. I I don't know. Even the things like as incidental as um, when I went up uh, to the um, the mountains or something, I was tracking, and um, suddenly these wolves popped up, and I, I turned and ran because I got what I needed. Um, the wolves started slipping on the ice. <laughs> I was just like, that's so weird. Like, because it's one thing when um, I, I put it in, in, in comparison to when I was watching Moana, I was just like, my brain just went, oh, that's water. And then about halfway through the movie, I was like, no, someone had to build that water and design it to look like water over and spend, you know, an obscene amount of, of manpower and time making it look like water. And then I just couldn't stop looking at the water. I was just like, no, this is, this is, <laughs> it looks too real. Yeah, the... The amount of detail that Rockstar puts into their game is one of the reasons why I I still... Like, Rockstar is one of the top-tier developers in my eyes. So just like I would have a lot more respect for them if they didn't crunch their employees to... Yeah, I mean, I am such a feel so weird about crunch because cr I feel like crunch is unavoidable, but there's also a way that... I mean, crunch can be abused, and but there's a way that you can manage crunch, and it, there's... Well, you should never aim for crunch. If you're aiming for crunch, then you're covering for shit you could have planned for. 
if you haven't allocated resources or, or time for certain things enough and then you're just crunching people at the end, that shows badly on well, you as a manager. I, with, say. I mean, with with entertainment and stuff, just because the amount of hitches that pop up when you're making something with entertainment of how many things need to be changed on the spot because a new mechanic may not be popular anymore or something may just happen and it may be reactionary, but like y you don't plan to crunch but you absolutely have to plan for there to be well like, it you seems need to... to me that a lot of these companies are now just planning on crunch and using it as a crutch where it's just like yeah sure we'll deal with this later and then the later ends up being and it's never the people who make the decision to crunch that usually are the ones crunching Oddly enough, when I was in college, more in my master's degree, when we were going over like project management and so on like that, we would uh, read articles about hospitals and the way they do their hours and manage their crunch. And Fun fact about that. Do you know what that system is based on? Uh, the Gregorian One calendar. dude who is doing cocaine oh. to keep up with it. I've heard something of that. Is that actually it? Or it's is that actually more true. Like a... I will I will track down the name of the dude and I'll send you a link to the actual story. But it's all on the back of this one dude that just was was doing cocaine whilst doing his rounds, and then they haven't changed the system since. So it's no wonder it burns people out so much. Yeah. No. I mean. Well, I, I mean, yeah, there's, like... there's also. I mean, there's there's that joke where. Grandma is going like, back in my day, we used to do this, 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 and this. And it's like, yeah, Grandma, they also put cocaine in your soda. Mm-hmm. We used to go out and play. It's like, yeah, and then what did you do with the world? You covered it all in concrete. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, and, you know, kind of ruined the economy. Made things mm -hmm. not affordable. But yep. on the flip side, things that are shockingly affordable are... Every, is everything in Red Dead 2? Yeah. Like, your character makes a decent amount of money that bank. is not really that realistic for that time. Like, there, there's a few times where Dutch is going, like, we just need a few hundred dollars or something like that, and Arthur's, I got Arthur's in there with a couple grand, and then I also have, like, 1,500 sitting in the camp. I'm like, yeah, no, dude, we're good. Like... Yeah. It's like, dude, you could go to fucking Tahiti. You could just buy a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to wait for Dutch to do because whatever. Because he had nonsense. a plan. Did he, though? I, nah. There's a theory, and I, it's also, like, said a bit, or at least alluded to a bit in the game, that Dutch uh, had some sort of... Um, either head injury or something Yeah, like I know that. people say that, but I think... If you look at his at him throughout the whole game, I think his that might have been a little push over the edge, but he was already ninety percent there. He was already well on his way to completely losing his mind. I think the death of Hosea was really set him off. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the point of no return. There's actually a lot of hints that they are in a relationship of some. Degree some description like you, Arthur can find them holding hands once or twice and if you antagonize Dutch at a, spe uh, at a specific time uh, when he's mentioning Jose is like oh yeah always you and Jose or, like it, it's not quite that phrasing but he's basically alluding to the fact that they are together in, in you know whatever way they could be at the time there's also, weirdly enough, speaking of that, there's actually hints, if you pick up on it, that Bill is gay as well. I don't really... I say I mean, as I well, but yeah. I never paid much attention to Bill. I just was bothered by him every time he spoke. So I was I, I was waiting for him to die. Because I no, was expecting he, he's, him. He's the first guy John oh. has to find at the beginning of RDR1. Oh. So he can't, I knew he was safe. Like, there's certain characters that are safe. Javier was safe. Uh, Bill was safe. Abigail and Jack were going to be safe for John, a time. The only um, person going into Red Dead 2 that I, I only knew three things with the characters. I knew that John was going to live, Dutch was going to live, and Arthur was going to die. 
That is all I knew. So I thought Hosea was going to live. Like, I expected him to live. I expected Bill to die. Um, there's, like, definitely some things that I didn't expect. And I absolutely could have just found out or whatnot. But I didn't. Yeah. I kind of enjoyed that a little. Yeah. It's, it's fun to enjoy just being surprised by things. Yeah, I, know. I usually um, ruin it for myself. There's kind of a hint that... Hosea gives himself up to the Pinkertons, so they'll let Abigail go. Because if you follow like the timeline of events, like they were together, and then he gets caught by the Pinkertons, but she gets away. I also feel so, like that's a Hosea thing. Like Hosea yeah, would do that. He was definitely the good because it's pretty firmly established that he and uh, Dutch are the dads of yeah. the the gang, and. Jose is definitely a good dad. Although um, I think Dutch is, a way yeah. that they could have maybe done Hosea's death a little bit better. So, like, mm -hmm. when he gets shot, uh, he turns around a bit to the Pinkertons and so on. Mm -hmm. I think what would have been a bit cooler or a better send-off for Hosea is if he just walked face forward towards John and or Arthur and I Dutch think... in that group, like, knowing that he's pretty much... He knowing that he's going to get shot, but he's just yeah. facing them, and he gets shot in the back, and continues walking towards them, facing them until he like collapses down. I, I thought that, that would have been of, a better yeah. send off. Well, his it would have been a better send off, but if you look at the scene, the way it is, is that it's highlighting how a pointless a death it is, how painful a death it is, because he's clearly just you know in a oh, lot yeah. of pain. And the fact that he dies in the horse shit in the gutter, it's just like, oof. like he was one of the best of them. Yeah. And he was always trying to focus on doing as little harm as possible, or only harming the the wrong people, as it were, the people who you know they he was trying to. He was a little cynical about uh, Dutch's Robin Hood style, very grandiose aspirations, but. He, he overwhelmingly be. thought they did more good than bad, and he was trying to keep them on that line. So the fact that he, of all characters, is the one that dies lying in the horse shit in the gutter is just like, well, I guess it's all downhill from here. Yeah, and then <laughs> Technically, my boy it's Lenny. all downhill from, yeah. Oh, my boy Lenny, Lenny just Jesus, gets yeah. shot. Lenny! Like, I mean, like, it, they don't need every death to be in a cinematic thing, and I actually yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of like that there was a death that was just kind of in gameplay in that manner. But mm -hmm. man, Lenny's just running him. forward, door bursts open, he just gets shotgunned right in the chest. Just yeah. down, like, oh my god. And uh, they've said that the um, if you pay attention to... Um, Lenny's camp interactions with Dutch, he's kind of grooming him to be uh, Hosea's inheritor in terms of like the mediator and his advisor on things. Because Lenny that. was one of the smartest and most well read characters in the um, in the camp. Um, I'm trying to and think it, but else. his death of it just kind of being like a quick pop thing right there. Reminded yeah. me of uh, Battlestar's death with Captain America Winter Soldier. Yeah. Of it just like, being oh like shit. a yeah, shock, boom, it's done. He's gone. He's just out. Yeah, and it, it uh, doesn't dwell. To, like, the characters notice, yeah. but then it moves on to the result of the death rather than the death itself. Yeah, yeah not to mention it seems like he pretty much died instantly. It doesn't yeah, seem to linger on A shotgun to the him. chest, you're not... He's pretty fucking, yeah, instant. Yeah. Like, Hosea had to, you know... Hosea was a, a pistol a shot few... in, like, the his lung or something? In, yeah. Like, so, I don't something remember like, exactly where, In but... his back, it probably... Yeah. It definitely hurt a lot going uh, as, as he was dying and bleeding in the gutter. But, yeah. um, Lenny's was pretty instant. Oh, rough. Um... I'd also love to say just I love the um, the women in the game. I mean Grimshaw and Karen and Mary Beth and Tilly and Abigail. They're all fantastic Sadie. characters. And Sadie. Sadie, Sadie is, is her own creature, I think, in terms of... Um, mostly because of how 
uh, how much she isolates herself in the early game, and um, oh, I could do it. I could well, talk I mean, about Sadie all day, but I do, I do just want to say about the because a lot of people tend to praise Sadie for being, you know, basically the the <laughs> the oh she'll grab a gun and she's a you know cold vicious psychopath a pistol when she needs mama. to be. Uh huh. Um, but it's it's quite apparent how broken she is and how she can't get over her husband's death and she's just stuck in this grieving process and instead of finding a way to get past it she kind of just stays in the rage part of the grieving process and just chooses to point it at the people who need to be taken out as it were like bounties and things so that's how she progresses into a quote healthier mindset which you know she definitely makes it to that point and i love her um her sort of tender understanding of arthur when he's getting really sick and she does things like um oh don't worry i'll do the frontline fighting you stay behind with the the rifle because yeah. she doesn't, she knows that he's he's not he's not up to it anymore. But she doesn't want to injure his pride, or, or you know, she wants to keep him with the dignity he has. I think um, we talked about this, but yeah, if there's I know, a Red Dead so Three, sweet. they gotta have Sadie as the protagonist. Like I said, I'm I'm convinced Red Dead Three, if they fucking get around to it, is uh, going to be Prohibition era, and Sadie's going to be like an old. If not um, the protagonist, bootlegger. an absolute like a main, a f- maybe the mentor, or a guiding yeah. figure. Like, I was so glad Charles survived. <laughs> I does, was like, oh, thank God you survived. Does Charles oh, well, 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 live goes, through everything? Um, I don't think he comes back. I I don't remember him being Is he one. Not in I could one? be wrong, but okay. um, I don't think he uh he comes back. But what happened to Uncle though? Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, where he gets, like, boiled alive, pretty much? Uh, like, skin, like, his back gets skinned, I think, and then he's... Well, he's they, cut. like, put it over a fire and have the... I hate the, the Murphy brood. And yeah. the uh, the night folk as well. They're just so goddamn creepy. Getting surprised by the night folk is just a bad time. What's the night folk? Have you ever, uh, have you ever wandered in the swamps at night? Probably? Probably... Sorry. Okay, so occasionally, and you can do find this during the day as well, if you're wandering in like the swamps uh, around Saint Denis, that you can find like a corpse that's just hanging there with a note pinned to its chest. Oh yeah, I've seen that. And when you turn around, suddenly your map marker will flare up with people who were not there before. They're all covered in like this white mud. And they'll just come out of the, the fucking shadows or whatever to just just jump you. And it's the most scary shit if you are not that prepared is awesome. for it. Yeah. And um, they're just frequently like that. They do have a, a base, but obviously it's also surrounded by alligators and shit. So it's like, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make get, make my way to that, do I? Oh, and I gotta say, I do love the uh, the giant alligator that's straight out of like Resident Evil. Is that the legendary gator? Yeah, the one that was just like, oh yeah, we've well, gotta. Is is the scariest part of the game for sure, which is where you just got it, which is saying a lot to be honest. Where you've got to stealthily walk around, um, waist deep in water. Oh man, whilst that you know entire there's a gator just around the scene made me uncomfortable especially as yeah. someone like i have never waded through a lagoon like that there have been times canoeing um mm-hmm. where the canoes tipped over and i've been waist deep in water that does have like i know has either gators snakes or like that kind of water but i've never just waded into it but my you i mean I, this could just be from someone who is like and has anxiety 24 7 I felt like every step, it was going to be like, there's going to be a gator in front of me. Yeah. Or something like that. Like, especially because one time when I was canoeing, this was fucking awful. We, uh, there was a hurricane recently. Mm-hmm. And we, my, we being myself, my sister, 
her at time boyfriend and there's another person too i think his brother um the four of us we were all uh kayaking going through this little island area off some of the water and the hurricane really messed up part of that spot and mm -hmm. we were trying to turn like the canoes around and our the one canoe i was in flipped over and completely <laughs> filled with water and so mm -hmm. we were in this like hurricane area where all these trees were down stuff like that and the wildlife also gets a bit rambunctious yeah. during yeah. that and we're in waist deep water with a canoe full so we have to like wade the canoe onto the land to empty it out somehow as well or just try to get water out of it in, in while well, in the water and man that is you yeah, you it, feel every little thing that moves around you especially like having leg hair or anything mm -hmm. you feel everything that you are hypersensitive yep um have you also found out the uh because you, you end up, if you look at like the newspapers and stuff at Saint Denis, it's like, oh, there's another murder. Uh, there's a, the vampire Saint Denis is struck again. And it's like these grisly murder scenes. And you're like, oh, it's just going to be a serial killer like it was with the dude who was leaving, you know, torsos everywhere. And if you follow the, uh, the, the clues and you go to the right place at the right time, you'll see the perpetrator, uh, you know, finishing off a kill. And it's like, that is an Osferatu vampire. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, isn't like, oh, Bigfoot in yeah. the game? Isn't so? Bigfoot in, like, every Rockstar game? In the game? first one, yeah. Oh, it's it in was, the first one. It's in the first one, and basically some, some dude gives you this mission where it's like, we need to kill all the Bigfoots because they eat babies and shit. And, and John's like, okay. So he hunts down like, I see, I can't remember how many there are of them. I think it's like four. And when That's he gets awesome. to the last one, uh, the Bigfoot turns around and says, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, <laughs> you can talk? And he's like, uh, but you eat babies and stuff, right? And he's like, no, we eat berries, you moron. <laughs> and he just sits there and he's just like, he's the last He's the last of his kind. Of his kind. Of and you get the option to either kill him or just leave him alone. Uh, speaking of, like, weird talking things, there's a weird fucking interaction you can have. Um, it was apparently supposed to be expanded upon, but um, didn't end up happening. So uh, it's, it's weird how you get to it as well. So if you're wandering around the wilderness, occasionally you'll see, like, a flock of birds flying in a specific direction. And if you follow them, and you keep following, and you keep following, and you keep following them, they'll lead you to this place that has this little, like, outcropping. And this voice will talk to you saying, like, oh, I'm a giant, and I live in this cave now. Um, I'd like a friend. A friend would be nice. And it's, it's strangely unsettling, but he is friendly, and you never see him. Is he the BFG? And, like, people... Sorry? Is he the BFG? He's not the BFG, or at least, you know, they, um, they've they never come He's out and said, so the files are still there, and he'll also, so you can meet him as Arthur, like, a couple of times, I think there's three or four interactions you can have with him before you start, you know, if you go back to the place as John, he'll then recognise, it's like, oh, you're not, you're, you're, you, oh, you, you, the you need my friend. Oh, the giant lost his friend! <laughs> I know, oh. and uh, he's just like, it's it's kind of weirdly unsettling. There's a whole heap of just, like, freaky, random shit you can, you can stumble into. Like, oh, UFO. Okay, why not? Um, and GTA oh, 5 uh, was the same kind of way. Oh. I know, but it's much freakier in RDR 2, because GTA 5 is kind of just that kind of game, where it, it, it's... RDR 2 has that realism... It, it, it's not even realism per se, but it's just when you're out by yourself in the wilderness, because it only happens at like three o'clock in the morning, if I remember right. So it's quiet and, you know, you go inside this cabin and suddenly these green lights appear. You know, it's a much more structured... Well, everyone knows that 3 a.m. is the scariest time of day. Yeah. Uh, um, and But with GTA V, there's mm -hmm. the... Uh, 
Mount Chiliad murder or ghost or something yeah, like I that. Know. And then yeah. the UFO, if you 100% the game, a UFO appears. Um, and oh, there's an eight, I remember also GTA Five in the very first mission, where it's like in the prior times, like the 1990s or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. When you're driving the car, if you go underneath the bridge that you just drive by, but if you go on the ice and go underneath the bridge, you can see an alien frozen in the, in the ice. That's weird. I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But speaking of the 90s, though, with GTA 6, so with Red Dead Redemption 2, what, do you think GTA 6, the realism, they're going to continue that level of it or do you I, think... I would honestly greatly appreciate if Rockstar could tone GTA a, a teensy bit the fuck down like the going because... through the catalog <coughs> or something because I know like Los Santos was supposed to be an LA you know a satire of uh, LA which is fine it's a very ridiculous place with mostly ridiculous people but Especially characters like um, Michael's son, you know, square, yeah. screaming racial slurs down down game chat and all that stuff. I'm just like, was this necessary? Really? <laughs> but, I feel um, like, yeah, just because it is a satire that... It's... I, look, don't get me wrong, like, there's satire and then there's just kind of... They ramp everything up to such a level of ridiculousness that it kind of negates a lot of the more emotional beats that they're clearly trying to have. Like, clearly there's a lot of issues with Trevor being betrayed by Michael. Trevor? But when, I felt... it, you know, when you have such a level of ridiculousness, it kind of makes it the whole thing, it kind of downplays it a little for me, at least. Um, I'm not saying you can't have ridiculousness, I just mean like, if you're gonna try and have a, a moment where of like self-realization or whatever, you kind of have to have some measure of emotional stakes to it that doesn't feel like it's gonna get blown over within you know a minute. Also, I'm, like Ch Trevor just torturing a guy for no reason is also fucking. Well, rough. I mean, I feel like that that does fit Trevor. Yeah, that's so more on, that's but... more criticizing Americans, you know, the CIA and everything. Yeah, yeah it's it, just, and yeah. it's also Trevor. I wasn't keen on him the first time I was playing because Trevor is a representation of the loud rock star community, the one that wants to push things mm -hmm. to the extreme, and Trevor is supposed yeah. to be the embodiment of that. But looking through it again, honestly, Trevor gets fucked over so mm -hmm. by Mike. Like at first, uh, I mean, I picked the ending with GTA Five where you take everyone else out and you try to keep the three of y'all alive. But I mm. also did the thing where, like, you kill Trevor, and I was just kind of like, yeah, fuck Trevor. But then this, like, second time going through, I didn't want to do the kill Trevor one because I was looking at, like, the story then from a different perspective with it, and I was just kind of like, yeah, no, Trevor, he thinks his friend gets killed, and then he runs yeah. off into the area or, like, the desert and shit just goes south there and you know he's had a bad mm. life and you know he has mental like all that kind of stuff it's just like damn i feel so just damn yeah but with it's GTA, just, I, i'm not opposed to characters like trevor but also if you're in a situation where the best way you can think of to highlight your negative fan base is to create a psychopath wallowing in his own filth uh, uh <laughs> mistreating pretty much everyone he comes across whilst also screaming how how much life has, has screened him over it's like um ha do you do you have a really low opinion of your fan base because it kind of seems that way yeah. also um yeah, yeah i i'm also like the one person oh i say the one person i'm i'm holding a, a torch for like bully too please but they'll never make it because no shark cards out of that so well i mean <laughs> yeah, I don't, maybe microtransactions can, can train or uh, change your grade don't give them ideas like you can oh my god there can actually be like a dlc for whoever those college people are that just got arrested for paying 
uh, to get their students or get their kids in college, something like that. They could be like that DLC that's just microtransactions. Or the amount, oh, the different layer could be, like, the highest amount could be the celebrity that got arrested for putting their kid into college or something by paying for it. Yeah, and she and did, like, like the, two weeks of prison. And then the lower yeah. tiers could be, like, some of the lesser people. And that could be the shark <laughs> God, that, that'd really be taking the piss out of that. Yeah, I think that would le- officially be liable at some point. I mean, is it if you're making fun of them for something they actually did? I think you can still get sued for that. Certainly in America, I'm I was going to say, America, you can sue for anything. Yeah. I I think other countries have laws where if you do frivolous lawsuits or stuff like that, you can actually, you're the one that gets in trouble. Mm -hmm. And then while America is just like... No, the whole thing is based on frivolous lawsuits. Oh, it's, yeah. So GTA 6, do you think they, I think that they're going to do a single protagonist that... Please be a woman. I, I think they're going to save the female for Red Dead Redemption 3 with Sadie. Mm. I think... Uh, I just I just want a woman. <laughs> I think GTA 6, they may... My idea for GTA 6 would be, it's... It takes place in the Florida pan, like around that kind of area, the panhandles Mm -hmm. area, um, that the games around there starts in the 90s of you being uh, just pretty much a young gangbanger, making your way up through a gang, and then you get a few buddies and stuff. An issue happens with that gang. You guys break in half, um, and then you're kind of creating your own gang so you have that your old gang that you used to be with now are rivals, and then there's the other rival gang. So you gotta readjust how you are presented by these gangs, and you could maybe even uh, change your relationship status with them um, by missions that you do or how your morale is, and so on. Um, then the game goes from the '90s to the aughts, then the tens, maybe, like, I don't know how far they want to go, but this seemed like Rockstar enjoyed that, the idea of Red Dead Redemption 2, the map changing over time, and this one would be a much larger scale, where if they have, it's literally starting in the 90s, and then the game ending in 2016 or something, um... You could quite literally have areas of the map that have nothing or just like marsh swamp areas that now have towns and so on built there. Not to mention the whole aftermath of Katrina. Yeah. um, And there's rumors that Cuba is going to be a part of it too. So like you can have Florida and have the accessibility to go to Cuba. um, I think I had a rumor that there was going to be like a brother-sister protagonist. That, so that was going to flip maybe. between two, so I think that could work. Maybe, but I would, I would also, really like it. And also, it would be if, nice um, if one of them was just, you know, considering, like you said before, like Trevor's the um, sort of the uh, representation of the worst of Rockstar's fan base. They certainly have a reputation for being a smidgen racist, homophobic, transphobic. Uh, Violently sexist. Um, so it would be nice if Rockstar could actually take steps to say, nope, we have a, a female protagonist, slash we have a queer protagonist, we have what, you know a person of colour, whatever. Um, well, and they and had people like, of is... colour as the protagonist. I know they had people of colour, but, you know, it seems... It's CJ. Exclusively <laughs> so they can get N-word privileges. What do you least... mean, though? It's... it's... For the story, I mean, if it's so much I know more it's story, with but CJ it's... and um, not Trevor, uh, Franklin. Yeah, I know. Uh, Franklin's and... great. I I don't have any issues with Franklin. However, just some parts of his story, especially when he's talking to um, oh god, I forget what his buddy's called. Um, Lamar. That's the one. Uh, Lamar. When he's talking to Lamar, it's just I don't know. Just he, you know. I mean, you know that uh, they, I'm, they got I'm, people I'm the lucky from... person who is privileged enough who doesn't have to hear the N-word on a regular basis. But 
when you just I mean, hearing you, it makes me really uncomfortable. So like, if you have like that's how they a talk. Whole, like that's how, how gangbangers talk. talk. And they, they actually know. got people I know suppose I, I know asking for you know I know it's it's like me asking for gangbangers to be nice to each other is is a bit much, but because uh, you're asking for some representation, feels... but this is the representation of them. They Put got it this gang way. bangers it... to come in there and look over the scripts and the dialogue for Franklin. I'm aware. I'm aware. Them. But so it's um, like, you know, they they were doing that representation, and part of that uncomfortability is what you're supposed to be feeling. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I get that. It's um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I lost my point. I lost my train of thought. I just think um, with GTA Six, it would be because they've they've done little bits of it here and there. If they were to do a little bit of a culmination where you start off as a like a gangbanger, something like that, in the '90s, and then. 20 years or 18 years something that gives a good amount of time span you go from starting as a gangbanger to actually growing your gang and actually taking over parts of florida or wherever the game may be i'm, I'm going with florida just because of the cuba rumors and mm -hmm. that just seems like i mean florida they've done miami they, there was miami vice but mm -hmm. i mean vice they could City e was... expand upon that the same way they expanded Vice City Los was Angeles. the one I played the most by a long shot. Yeah, I think it, I did a lot of San Andreas and all of that, but like I just because uh, Red Dead Two has you in a gang, but you're just like a uh, you're just a member of it. You're not a leader. Um, hmm. With GTA Five, you kind of have some of that leadership thing, but it's kind of limited. I mean, it's still because you're still following a story. But there are some choices that you can make and uh, how your heists go, which quote unquote choices that you make. They, they, there yeah, are it some seems differences. very limited when you actually boil it down. It's well, like, oh, there you are know, you some get... differences of like uh, if you do get a better hacker that you, yeah, I know. the person actually may not die or something like that. And, and I've also found replaying GTA Five, um, some random NPCs that you come across that you help, they can appear later in heists as people that you can bring on with you i didn't know that i thought the people in the heist were like predetermined set up but you can find people around the the map and the world or something to actually build your group and yeah. building upon I, that actually i just GTA want 6. like a world that feels like semi-real people live in like by all means have the like the outrageous satire is always fun in doses, but uh, like just to uh, put in comparison, like the Saints Row series, they go from for eleven the entire time. They don't go. They don't drop down from eleven. It's always what's the most ridiculous thing we could do. Let's do that, um, which is great fun. Um, I mean, if you're looking for when... uh, like pride representation or stuff like that. Um, if this game is with the 90s or maybe 80s or something like that of uh, some early time, uh, I mean, around Florida, around Orlando, Miami, I mean, I know the uh, Stonewall riots and so on were the 70s, 70s or yeah. Yeah, 70s. Like in late, New York late 60s way, so. or 70s. But, I mean, Orlando, at least when I was there, they very much accept pride and all of that. Like, they, they don't shy away from that stuff. So there could be some of that build up in uh, in the game where you can have an area like Orlando, Miami, some sort of more populated, more city area of people mm -hmm. fighting for those rights. And then when the game goes on at the end, 18 years later, those people aren't fighting for their rights anymore. You see a gay couple. They can just, just be domestic going... and just be like, yeah. oh, yeah, and you we can are actually... a family now. Yeah, um, like if you uh, of, um, saw the women voters in Red Dead yeah, Redemption the, the 2. The suffragettes, yeah. yeah. I was just about if, to bring that up. I was like, happens. speaking of the, the suffragettes, it's so... Because th th it would have been so easy, because John has a few flavors of this in RDR1, it would have been so easy for like, I just don't get them women folk. You know, just like... Occasions being like, oh, women can't figure out what they want or whatever. But Arthur has 
positive relationships with pretty much every woman he comes across with like very few exceptions <laughs> except for the women that are actively trying to kill him um something i'm curious so about. when you have the suffragettes and he's like and they're like oh can you drive us into town and he's just like yeah sure why not you know and yeah. he's not dismissive of their their fight to get the right to vote he he just kind of thinks the right to vote is kind of pointless to begin with he's like if you want it by all means you should have it yeah arthur you know? arthur seems like a kind of person that just doesn't vote yeah because but... he's uh, yeah it's also that thing of i'm not uh, i'm my history's a little bit spotty in terms of who could vote at that point but I don't think it was that many people. Um, so uh, he Arthur probably, being a would white be man, able to. he could probably vote. Yeah. Um, I don't. Well, I mean, when there was a thing about being a landowner, but I don't know how much of that changed. And there's also, depending. I mean, I don't. I don't know specifically when this is, but I know that uh, in America we used to not be able to vote for our senators. But mm -hmm. that did get changed around a bit alongside some other voting things, so... Yeah. There's all that. Yeah, so it's definitely that thing of... But I would, <laughs> I would love to see them take that... Because, to me, a thing that Rockstar really does well is the world is... is pr Almost, the, is the protagonist itself, almost. Mm. Um, and That's you just happen to be, to be a character alive. that yeah. is interacting with these events that is happening. But, so, like, in Red Dead 2, when you're actually going through Valentine or Saint Denis, any of those, and you're actually seeing it get built and change as the times go on, that's over the span of, what, a few few months or maybe a year how how long is the story of red dead 2 i think it's about two years complete with like the time skips and everything fair because there is the time where you're yeah in i think there's area, an extra two, two years i think it's about about a year with arthur about a year i say um and then well you can just like, see like that two three years oh, yeah, there is that jump i think it's john. about five years time skip with john um, and you can really yeah, see, like, the towns be built up differently. San Denis almost, mm -hmm. like, just it feels new while also familiar going through. And I would love to see them expand upon that in one the next one. One of my favorite one. moments is, uh, and it's entirely optional, and I'm kind of amazed it's kind of entirely optional, is the conversation with, that Arthur has with the nun, where he just oh admits that he's God. afraid of dying. Holy shit! Just Roger Clark knocked that out of the park. Just that's that's one of the most honest and earnest. Just, just he, he, that, that's that's another thing I love about Arthur. He's very open when he's with someone he trusts. He's very open about how he's feeling, what's going on, and you can tell when he's comfortable with someone very easily. Uh, depending on how he, he acts around them. But uh, for the people he'll feel co he'll come around, he'll open up very easily. And uh, with this woman who's, you know, leaving, literally, there's no consequences for him either telling her or not telling her, but he chooses in that moment to open up to her, and it's wonderful. When I worked at a retirement home, there was one resident there I will always remember. It was Sister Margaret. She was a uh, nun, um, and she would always say. <laughs> be wearing her outfit um, and everything. The wimple? She, uh, what, what? The wimple. That's what yeah, the headpiece is called. I can't, I can't remember what it was called. But um, <laughs> she would have me help her a decent amount with her computer and printer and so on, but she would also tell me these stories of when she would go out into Europe and go to all these different churches across the countries mm. and... Oh, that's that been doubly emotional for you. Oh, shit. It was so cool. And, I mean, that was... Like, when I left the retirement home to go to college, uh, she gave me her number and her email and stuff. And she was like... Aww. If I, like... Because I told... I gave her my email. It's like, if you need help or something, you can, like, reach out. Although I've, I've realized the issue of... 
if she's having an issue, how can she email me? Yeah, but, I know. Um, I like, yeah, Very no, it's just, I ever since Sister Margaret, I've had a soft spot with nuns with that. And there was also uh, one man there. It was um, Father. God, I can't can't remember. Father something, but he was a World War Two vet. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was like, a, he was a priest in the war. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting. But yeah, uh, I just get, yeah, I just people... got reminded of that when I saw that nun there and I was like, cause I, I mean, I have had some similar conversations with sister Margaret and so on with that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, God. It, they, they talked almost the same way. And I was like, oh, I can't have this. <laughs> no, this is too close. Occasionally I'll come across something. It's like, nope, this is too close to home. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Another side person that was really fun was that scientist. Oh, guy. yeah. There's, like, there's a couple of mad scientists that little in it. But the, the guy who was the robot. Yeah, and then the robot murders him. And apparently that robot's in Red Dead 1. Um, I, I'm not sure about where, I can't confirm Red Dead 1, but you can find the it's robot. It's an easter egg or something of that Maybe, robot. but, um, if you, if you, in Red Dead 2, you can go find the robot. If you use the lantern that the dude gives you, um, when it's heading the right direction, I think it turns red. So if you follow the light of the lantern, it'll lead you to the top of this mountain. And the little robot will just be sat there going, Papa, Papa. Papa is like, know oh, what no. he's done. <laughs> and you could just, is he just, he just looking at his hands? He, not at his hands, but he's just sort of sat there just looking at his, like, down the mountain. <laughs> so he's just like, waiting for oh, him to ask. Robot. Waiting for him to turn and ask if this unit has a soul. Pretty much. I was, I was borderline saying, does this unit have a soul? Um, but yeah, he's just clearly stuck because he doesn't know what he's done. But we're. That's. A about yeah. wrapping up is there any other gaming news or anything popping up um not so much news just something i'd like to plug which is um uh, i recently discovered i've been meaning uh, i came across them a while ago but um i didn't have my computer to actually play their games um lunaris games if anyone's out there who enjoys um a nice romance story or a visual oh, is that novel the type. one that you put the picture of Yes. In chat with Lucy, Lucier. Lucian, yes. Um, Lucian. And the, the art style is very pretty. And I'm currently playing one where it's like, ooh, um, kingdoms of humans and fae. And well, that's very much up my alley. And what's and that game called? It's called Errant Kingdom and made by Lunaris Games. And if you search that on Steam, it'll come up. And not only do you get to pick your pronouns... There's three routes you can play throughout the game, and there's also different romances, and they're all stupidly attractive, and it's very irritating. <laughs> so, like, I can't choose. Usually, like, with, with romance games, I'm like, that one, that one's the one I want, um, which admittedly did happen here after, like, the fourth one, but I'm being mighty tempted by the others. They're all very attractive. And they're all... Is that... Um, yeah? Is that romance game where you can romance weapons or so that dungeon crawler yes you... okay so that's boyfriend dungeon what you're thinking of and it, you is that out fun it's not out um i think it's out on steam it's not out on switch yet because i was i was waiting to get it on switch i could get it on steam but um uh the whole gist of it is that you go fight in dungeons and your weapons have like ma anime magical girl transformations into hot people uh, especially since it started being boyfriends exclusively and then they added lovely ladies and non-binary people as well so it's like yay inclusivity um and i'm very much looking forward to giving that a go as well so um but uh yeah um lunaris games check them out they're really good and their main focus is telling queer stories in visual novel forms and they've got a couple of different games out at the moment and i just really recommend them on uh, there's some, another there's one thing I quickly wanted to mention that the so the Resident Evil update for Dead by Daylight is a thousand uh -huh. times better than I thought it was. 
<laughs> a thousand, wow. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, it's Nemesis that they're bringing in. Uh -huh. um, the way his ability works, I thought it was just like this tentacle that comes out and hits them. It, it What it does is it hits a person and it contaminates them. And as uh -huh. a person's contaminated, uh, Nemesis grows in strength. Oh, no. And then kind of like Myers when he tears up. So there's that. And Nemesis also brings two zombies to the map. For the first time, there are AI zombies that run around and will chase survivors. And they can damage the survivors and everything like that. And the survivors can throw a pallet down and it will kill a zombie, which then later respawns. But zombies will just walk around areas and if a survivor activates them, they'll chase them. And that's the first time that they've had that kind of mechanic in Dead by Daylight, but that ability adds so much potential to but new I, I characters would say, or yeah. reworks or any of that For stuff. For you, I think you would get a big kick out of playing um, the Resident Evil remake. remake I, that is now Resident higher up remake. on my list. Yeah, um, because I, I love especially they for one thing there's two things i love about the remake especially of two for one thing they made leon kennedy and claire redfield so goddamn cute that i was just like i'm too bisexual for this game oh, leon um, and whoever the girl is in claire claire they are the two characters which I'm they're aware. adding two I'm aware. survivors yes in this dlc which is nice yes um so uh, that's the other thing. The other thing is the game starts with this trucker eating a sandwich as he's heading towards Raccoon City. And this sandwich is the most lovingly rendered thing you have ever seen in your life. It made me hungry looking at it. I was just like, oh, I, wanted to, I want a sandwich. It looks so good. <laughs> just, mm. it, it, and uh, they, they showed the... Um, What's it called when they have the uh, the model uh, the, the, the outside of the uh, the game? But they showed what it actually looked like outside. And I was like, oh, it's so it's good. I just want that sandwich. Like, when, yeah, when the it's like that extra of it, version model of it, yeah. thing and you can, yeah. Yeah. And, but but uh, uh, the game itself is fantastic. And oh, it's, I've heard. I, I definitely mm, want to check it out. You should point. do it. And yes. the characters, I forgot which one, but one of them is bringing a perk that lets you craft a flashbang mm -hmm. which is um they've had firecrackers as mm -hmm. things in the game before but mm -hmm. were very limited uh, i think they were like you could only get them during special events like you couldn't even get mm -hmm. them normally and now they're having it in ways that you can craft them in the game and that as a new survivor mechanic that adds a lot of potential i there's so much being added with this and the map is uh the raccoon police department it yeah it looks so good yeah and trust me if you like the map on dead by daylight you'll like it even oh, more when I'm you can to, interact with all the puzzles and i'm the gonna be playing stuff. resident evil 2 to get ready for this uh so i like know where to do all the loops and everything like, <laughs> i'm gonna need to actually be playing the game so i can actually I can call Tell you what was so funny, I was watching my, my partner play because it was his he was the one who played it the original. So he was very keen to see what the remake was like. And um in two, um you have Mr. X stomping around looking for you. because uh, the nemesis is from three. Um and Mr. X is just like a dude in a big coat. Like, when I say a big They're, dude, those like are nine foot tall or something right? like that, like seven, eight feet tall, maybe. My, my they math is off. Tyrants. Mm, there's some called tyrants, but he's like, called Mr. X. Mr. X. This one, is and he just tyrant? stalks around. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, maybe. Uh, Either way, it's kind of done. He, he's called Mr. X. This one in the yeah, coat yeah. and the hat. He's called Mr. X, and <laughs> he was my my other half. He was he was thinking, okay. He's in that direction, so I'm going to slowly back up this stairwell and then suddenly hear this stomp, stomp, stomp directly behind him. Wait, how did he do that? <laughs> he just, because some, he, he, 
he will just move around the map. And while you are safe... No, he wasn't looking at him. He just thought he'd gone a certain way when, in fact, he'd gone up the stairs. So when he was trying to stealthily back up the stairs, he, in fact, backed straight into him. Alien, that reminds me of Alien Isolation. Pretty much. And Nemesis... climbing through the vents. Nemesis is even more aggressive in the third one, uh, the third remake. Well, he has a rocket launcher. uh Uh-huh. Mr. X just uses his fist, right? I don't think Mr. X has a gun. Um, Mr. X has like <laughs> when you the more you fight him, the more it's like, oh, he is a big old mutated beastie under that. So, um, whereas Nemesis, it's just like, why won't you fucking die? Yeah, Nemesis <laughs> gets bigger and bigger, and then like you put him because I watch. Mm-hmm. I mean, with with Nemesis being the one coming out, I've been watching videos and stuff about Nemesis. Yeah. And, like you. Considering he's him. literally on the f- on the cover in his actual like final form and everything, so oh, it's not really? really much of a spoiler. Damn, that's a spoiler. Well, it's not so much a spoiler as of, of a game that's been out for decades now. Fair. So yeah, that's if you fair. didn't know, then yeah. I... And also, it's it's Resident Evil. If it doesn't turn into a giant tentacly eyeball monster at some point, then what what are you even doing in a Resident Evil game? I guess also speaking because speaking of like Resident Evil games. Resident Evil Village is really good. And I'll say this, it has one of the most viscerally terrifying things I've ever seen in a, in a video game. For those I've who know, that. for those who know, the BM Viento estate is the most terrifying shit I've ever seen. And it's almost as if uh, the game said as a whole, hey, we got any parents in? Because we're going to traumatize the f- fuck out of you because there's some stuff in this that's like in terms of like it's one thing to put the kid at peril in terms of like oh the kid's been kidnapped we've all seen that we're all kind of a bit immune to it but there's lengths they go to to really make you feel the peril that this kid is in and the fact that you know obviously you're her dad you're playing her dad yeah that's so viscerally upsetting and I said, I'd say, you know, if, if you are going to get upset by that sort of thing, you know, just take, take a warning before you, you try it. But I would highly recommend Resident Evil Village because it's very... <laughs> I did just spend, like, the, the first hour of it going, what the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? What the, what the fuck? Because <laughs> it just keeps escalating throughout the whole first hour. It's incredible. And that's even before you were properly in with um, Lady Demetresk, who's, you know, everything you could hope she, she would be. I keep wanting to call her Lady Dominatrix, but I Which know that's not, not right. Not incorrect. It is not incorrect. Yeah. She, could, she spends the entire time calling you Man-Thing for the most part, so yeah. And also, like, with Dominatrix, Nemesis is Mori in Dead by Daylight has him, like, Picking you up by like his hand just picks you up by the head, slams you down, and then he just his foot stomps on your head. It's just like, oh, jeez. Hmm. That is not fun. <laughs> he and uh, if he kills uh, Claire, he mm-hmm. says stars. stars. Like he says he says that bit of it. Yeah, because and because all- Leon, yeah. Last, last little thing I want to say about it. In the, uh, in the reveal trailer for Nemesis, he fucking murders Meg. Like, the, one of the characters that... That's the, kind of the point, isn't it? <laughs> well, the community... Well, I mean, they don't really kill them like that much. I mean, they, they've killed them before in the release trailers, but they kind of show the survivor being alive yeah, triumph, in the manner. You know... But he's like, no, Nemesis is going to fucking but, kill you. Well, this was, like, Meg, the tentacle wrapped around Meg and threw her. And it was such just a, and like a thump. And she just drops down. And the community hates Meg. She, like, people who play Meg, as well as people that play Nia, are assholes. And so... Seeing Meg okay. just be yeeted against this car so damn hard, the entire community went like, yo, 
Like, I've been seeing a bunch of memes just popping up with Meg getting blasted. <laughs> As it, you do. It was incredible. Is it one of those things where the reputation is earned, or is it just that thing of, like, why do you hate this character? It's like, nah, we don't know, we just hate her. It's, it's her perks are... Oh, okay. It, well, I mean, there's a thing of, like, her perks, as well as the people that use her, or Nia will have their skins for them that are brightly lit, and they're kind of, like, those asshole people. Because in the game where you're hiding, and it's horror and stuff like that, you don't want to wear bright neon colors, and bright orange sweatpants but nia has an outfit like that that makes you shine across the map but you know that that person's an asshole who's gonna just run you through loops and flashlight spam and just do like all that stuff so i just ignore them for the most part like cool i'm just gonna go for your friends on the generator because i know you're not touching them but okay (laughs) that is Uh, about all that we have for this podcast if you enjoyed this content please hit the subscribe button like the video join our discord which there's a link in the description below uh there's also our twitter handles which are also in the description below Mm -hmm. um scott will be back next episode because and we should be doing the mass effect quiz so yeah, that, that'll be fun. Although hopefully we're going to be doing uh, recordings on Sunday now, just because things are never easy. No. Scheduling always pops around, but that is what you guys come here to love is for the uncertainty of when things are actually releasing or if they are at any point. Uh, we love to, we love to keep you guys on your toes. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. See y'all next episode. See you guys. I got no fucking idea how I'm supposed to end these podcasts.